What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ron Kwok, and today we're talking about my COVID carry nine months later, and hopefully we get through this list before I pass out. Intro. Ah, coronavirus. 2020 has been a crazy year so far, and it's not even over. We've been struggling with the coronavirus all year long. It's turned into a full-blown worldwide pandemic, and we're trying to figure out how to best safeguard ourselves from the virus. So this respirator actually picked up sometime last year when the California wildfires were breaking out. Not exactly COVID, but there were a lot of particulates in the air, like ash and smoke that really just made the air quality super bad. I have not used this for uh, the coronavirus though, because um, there's a lot of things that we know now that we didn't know before. And uh, at the end of the day, I think most people can uh, agree that this would be a little bit of an overkill. Let me preface this by saying that I'm not a scientific expert. All the information that I get from how to best handle coronavirus and how to protect myself and others from the spread of the virus are from scientific sources online and the CDC resources that are available to me and you and everyone online. All right, so from what we know about coronavirus, it is an infectious disease that affects our respiratory systems. We get it by breathing in droplets that contain the virus, either through our eyes, nose, or mouth. Based on that, our COVID carry will focus on keeping our hands clean and covering our nose and mouth to minimize the travel of those droplets, either in or out. I'll make sure I link all the gear that I talk about in the description below so you can have a look for yourself to see if that's something that's applicable to you that you might find useful. On top of that, I'll post some resources on wearing masks and informational stuff about COVID so that you can kind of do a little more research for yourself and stay informed on the topic. First up is a face covering. This is a multi-layered cloth mask and you wanna make sure that it fits you well. Up here at the nose, on the sides and under the chin here, you wanna make sure that there's an adequate seal all around and that there aren't any huge gaps where air can bypass the mask entirely and enter your nose and mouth. Ideally, the nose will have a metal piece here that's malleable and flexible. That way it can conform to the shape of your nose when you press down on it, creating an even better seal up here where it matters. The mask is reusable and washable. So after I use it, I'll throw it in the wash and make sure that I have clean masks at the ready whenever I need to go out. Now, not every mask will fit you the same. When I put this on, for example, it has that nose bridge and you can see that it wraps into my chin here and it provides a really good seal all around. There's no crazy gaps that happen on the sides or under the chin and it's a, an overall good fit. However, if I put on a different type of mask, like this one, for example, it'll go over, but it's kind of loose. You can kind of see that it's protruding here and there's more of a gap here. The way I counteract that is I combine it with a mask strap. So this is a paracord strap that I made using my own paracord. And basically it's one long strap. It's quick deploy, of course, just in case I need it. And there's two knots at the end that I can put on the back of my neck. So this strap actually does two things. It pulls the mask a little tighter, so it sits a little more snugly on your face. That way it kind of cinches down on the gaps here so there's not as many gaps and there's a better seal. Secondly, without the mask strap, the elastic bands are pulling the mask up. And I've noticed that after talking for a while, the mask tends to ride up and it kind of obscures my eyes and gets uh, kind of in the way, very uncomfortable. What the mask strap does to counteract this is that it pulls the mask down a little bit so that it stays in place and it's more secure. If you guys are interested in taking a closer look at this mask strap, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can put together in terms of a tutorial or pointing you guys in the right direction. Next up is hand sanitizers. Instead of using those one-off Purell bottles where after you're done, you kind of just have to toss it, I'm using one of these flexible silicone bottles. Now I think they market this as a TSA approved travel carry for like your shampoos and lotions and stuff, but I've noticed that this is actually really useful for hand sanitizer 
user as well because it's three ounces it's small enough to take with you if you travel and on top of that it's small size offers uh, flexibility when you want to carry it either on your person or in your bag. The hand sanitizer that I use to refill that bottle is the Chemical Guys hand sanitizer. Uh, the main thing you wanna look for here is that it's over a 70% alcohol level. The CDC recommends that anything over 70% is adequate to kill the bacteria and the germs that are on your hands. I'll go ahead and link both the bottle and the refill in the description below. Now real quick, I wanna talk about disposable gloves. Right now I don't use gloves anymore because I have my hand cleanliness routine down. Between the hand sanitizers and the access that I have to restrooms either at home or at work, I don't have to worry about my hands being too dirty. Now, of course, on this channel, we live with purpose. So we custom tailor our loadouts and kits to help us get the job done, whatever that may be. And because that ranges from person to person, the use of disposable gloves here is entirely up to you and your needs. I do keep a spare pair or two in my car glove compartment, just in case there's an odd job that needs or requires that sort of extra protection. But on the day to day, I'm good between the hand sanitizer and the frequency at which I wash my hands. So I think the biggest thing with masks that I need to stress, and I see it a lot out in my community, it's not just meant to protect you from COVID. It's also meant to protect others from you if you end up contracting COVID. Now remember that COVID in a lot of cases is asymptomatic. So you may not feel any of the symptoms and you could still be carrying it. And because we don't have instant access to testing all the time, so you can't tell you know, at any given point during the day or week whether you have COVID or not. I think the main thing here is that we gotta get through this as a community. And so it's not only to protect yourself, but it's to protect others. Now I wanna get into some best practices that I've incorporated into my daily routine to safeguard myself and others from COVID. As you know, you can have the best gear on the planet, but if you don't know how to use it and maintain it effectively, it's pretty much useless. So with that same train of thought, I wanna go into some of the things that I've started doing with my masks and my COVID safety gear to make sure that we continue to stay safe. Now, first and foremost, when you're using the mask, be aware that when you're breathing in and out, the, uh, the droplets will get caught up on the mask. And so because of that, this area right here probably has COVID on it. So when you remove your mask to get into the car or remove your mask when you come home, don't grab it from here and lower it like this because you're gonna be touching it. If you're not mindful of that, you'll be touching the mask and then after that, rubbing your eyes or picking your nose <laughs> and it's not gonna be a good time. So whenever I need to lower my mask or put on my mask, I only touch it at the extremities. I kind of bring it down like this and then bring it back up like this. Another thing is fitment. You wanna make sure you're wearing your mask properly. Don't wear it like this, because if there are droplets in the air, you're gonna be inhaling it just as if you weren't wearing a mask at all. When you're talking to people, if they can't hear you because of the mask, just talk louder and enunciate. Don't bring the mask down and talk to them this way. It ruins and defeats the whole purpose of the mask. Another thing I like to do is once I enter my car, I remove my mask if I'm on my way home and I always have a certain spot in the car that I put my dirty mask. It's always in the same spot. I don't put it everywhere in the center console, on the shifter, on the other seat, passenger seat, anything like that because if you don't keep that consistent, you might be spreading those droplets via physical contact around your car and you won't know it. When I get home after using my mask, I always toss my dirty mask in a dedicated dirty mask bucket. Worst case scenario is you take your mask, you go out and do your thing. When you come home, you'll have accrued some droplets on there and so you don't wanna risk touching or breathing that in. So for me, my rule of thumb is I always just use a mask once. Once it's used, it's done, I throw it in the wash or throw it in the pile so that I can wash all my dirty masks at once when it's time. Now, one thing that you can do as it pertains to everyday carry is to make sure you clean and maintain your gear thoroughly and frequently. Now, I often stress on this channel that you gotta maintain and clean your gear. How can you expect it to help you get the job done if you don't give it the TLC that it deserves? It's in your daily kit for a reason and because of that, you gotta make sure you take care of it. Now, when you're out there doing your thing, you'll never know when something has COVID on it, either a surface or droplets in the air. 
That's why whenever you bust out your knife to cut something or you handle your keys or even pull out your wallet to pay when you insert your card into a chip reader, you can't know for sure what has been in contact with that surface before and you risk bringing COVID back home on your everyday carry. Because of that, not only do I have a hand sanitizer for my hands, but I have a surface sanitizer I use on my gear. It's by the same guys that make the refill that I use to refill my hand sanitizer. And what I do is, for example, the main application I use for this is my credit cards, gas stations and stuff. Uh, more often than not, you'll have to enter your card or swipe your card. And you never know if the previous person that used this station swiped their card if they're sanitized or not. So to avoid taking that risk when I come home, I uh, lay my cards out and I spray it down with this and let it air dry. That way I can make sure that the cards are sanitized for the next time I go out. The way I clean my spider coat is I'll use knife oil to clean the blade itself and then I'll spray the sanitizer here onto a towel and I'll use the towel to wipe down the handle and the scales. That way I kind of separate how those two elements within the knife are cleaned and maintained just to make sure that I'm following directions of the manufacturer and making sure everything is properly maintained. Now it goes without saying that if you're not in contact with people who have COVID, there's no way you can get COVID. And so the best way to deal with that is to make sure you're socially distancing yourself. Make sure you're staying at least six feet away from other people, regardless of whether you're indoors or outdoors. And when you're indoors, make damn sure you're wearing a mask as well. The reason for that is when you're in an indoor space, the droplets in the air are more stagnant and stay in one place and you run a higher risk of breathing that in or passing it around to others. And the best way to counteract that if you have to be indoors is to wear a mask and make sure that you're practicing social distancing as much as you can. When you're outdoors, the air moves more freely and you have run less of a risk of breathing that in directly if you're just in a single spot. Now, of course, wearing that mask and practicing social distancing are the single best two measures that you can use to safeguard yourself and others from COVID. And that's about it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you got something useful out of this one. I hope that you enjoyed this example of a COVID carry from an everyday enthusiast perspective. Things I've adopted into my daily routine involve using a reusable face covering made of multi-layered materials and has proper fitment, some hand sanitizer that's sustainable and refillable, and a series of best practices that I've adopted into my daily routine whenever I'm going out into the field. That involves practicing social distancing, washing my hands as frequently as I can, properly with soap and water, and finally making sure I isolate any materials that may have come in contact with COVID like masks, keys, wallets, other things in your kit and make sure I isolate them. And when I come home, I can properly disinfect, sanitize and clean them. That way you start with a fresh slate every day, COVID free, safeguarding yourself from COVID and making sure you're protecting your loved ones as well. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I release new content on everyday carry gear and adventure. Until next time, live with purpose. Peace.